Now, in the last session, we were talking about don't compare yourself with other people, whether you're in the ministry or whether you're anybody in the body of Christ. It doesn't make any difference. Don't compare because you'll end up in failure if you do. So just be yourself. That's what we said at the end of the session. And what the gifts that are in you will just come out. You won't even have to try. It'll be easy. Just do what comes natural for you. Those are the gifts that have been placed in you. All right. Now, develop the gifts that God's placed in you for sure. Now, I know when I graduated from Bible school in 1975, uh, when I did my first pastorate up there in Minnesota, I, I could sense it. It was just as clear as everything. People were expecting me to be like Kenneth E. Hagan. And of course, he's a prophet, and he had a special visitation with Jesus. Jesus touched the palms of his hands for healing anointing, and that he lay hands on the sick and they would be healed. And I, I, I knew it. They, I graduated from Kenneth Hagan's Bible School, and I know they expected me to have hot hands and be able to lay hands on them. Well, I knew better than that. I, and, I, and, and the only way I could counteract all of that was to, I would say, when I got, would I, when, before I would begin the service or begin a healing line or what have you, I would have to say, now look, I want you to understand one thing. I am not Kenneth Hagin, I am not Kenneth Copeland, and I am not, uh, you know, Lester Summerall or, 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 or Osborne or Osteen or any of those. I am Jim Casement. And I can only minister with what God put into me, my heart. I can't be like these other men. I can't be them. I don't have the gifts that they had and what have you. And so that's how I had to do the meetings. And I remember a real <laughs> time that I'll never forget. And one of my trips overseas, I ended up in, uh, in Sweden. And of course... Uh, that church uh, it was a member of AFCM and all of that. And, and so I came there to teach uh, daytime uh, workshops on faith. That was my thing. Now, the main speaker was T.L. Osborne. And now, I'm, I'm sorry, I said Sweden. I should have said Norway. Norway. So in Norway, of course, the state government is the Lutheran Church. And here the church had put up billboards all over town. Come and see the dead being raised. <laughs> the dead being raised. It was T.L. Osborne. He raised the dead in Africa. Lots of dead people. And what have you. And of course it got to Norway in an uproar. Oslo, where the meetings were. And uh, so then the day comes for the conference to start. And I show up and everything starts on Monday night, right? Well, it did start without T.L. Osborne. <laughs> and we had a real problem getting out of the hotel. The, uh, all of the reporters and cameramen and everything else wanted to take pictures of T.L. Osborne coming out of the hotel. We had to learn to back, use the back door and everything. And guess what? T.L. Osborne doesn't show up. Oh, great. Well, it was just natural. You know, the, the, the people in the Norway church says, Hey, Caseman, you take Osborne's place. Are you kidding? The stadium was full of people. And I'll never forget it. I had to get up in front of those people and say, look, everybody, it's obvious that I am not T.L. Osborne. So don't expect me to minister like T.L. Osborne does because I don't have the gifts that he's got. I just had to set it straight right there. So I just went ahead and did what I know I could do. You know, I let the Holy Spirit lead and guide me and I ministered a message. I don't remember what it was now. But anyway, I ministered. And would you know, the next night, see, there's five nights of meetings. So the second night, Tuesday night, T.L. doesn't show up again. <laughs> Had to stand in front of the same crowd and say, hey, look, I'm not T.L. Osborne. And of course, then I ministered as the Lord uh, had led me to do. And um, praise the Lord. Well, I uh, got over that. T.L. Osborne, Osborne did show up. Did an awesome job for the remaining nights. And uh, I was privileged to be able to spend some time with him. Praise the Lord. Well, another time, I, I remember I, got, I came back home. We were living in Tulsa, and I, I think I'd come back from overseas just, short, just before that. And, of course, Brother Hagen must have found out that I was in town. And he called and asked if I would fill in, him, fill, fill in for him in for his class because he had some errands he had to run. <laughs> 
Oh, yes, Brother Higgin, I'd be happy to do that for you. Who's going to say no to Brother Higgin? Well, that was another one of those things. But it wasn't too difficult because this was the Rainbow Bible Training Center. And so when I got in front of them, it was real obvious to everybody, <laughs> I'm not Brother Hagen, who they had been seeing every day. So I just went ahead and ministered uh, the best I knew how with what I had at that particular point in um, uh, the um, my ministry. All right. Then another time, of course, in those years, Full Gospel Businessman was uh, really hot. I mean... There were Full Gospel Businessmen's chapters everywhere and, and lots of people showing up for these meetings and many people getting born again, many getting filled with the Holy Ghost. And actually, it was Full Gospel Businessmen. When I first started the traveling ministry, I had solid meetings of uh, Full Gospel Business meetings. At one point, I even had one solid month in a row lined up with meetings every night. And uh, it was something else. It was really something how God was working those years, those days in full gospel. But you know, it was something. I would end up, I'd get to a meeting, and at some of these meetings, the leaders would get behind, would pull me off into a room, some side room, you know, away from the crowd, and they wanted to pray over me. Well, whew, I've learned to guard my spirit, you know, a long time ago. So I just had to shut it up because I didn't know what hands were being going to be about to be laid hand, hands being about to be laid on me, and I remember them praying more than once. Oh, thank you, Lord, for Brother Caseman. Thank you, Lord, for the last speaker that we had and how he prophesied, and he just prop was able to prophesy to everybody and tell them their names and all of this sort of stuff, and and he laid hands on people and people were healed. Oh, may Brother Caseman have the a greater anointing than even he had, and may he prophesy. And what hallelujah, Mati! I tell you, they were trying to. I don't know. You know, they were using witchcraft. I think. <laughs> I mean, I know what God told me to do. And I don't need to, to see here then, I, I, I had to come under this temptation of, what am I going to do? They expect me to prophesy. They expect me to do what the last guy did and people came out of the wheelchair. Well, see, I can't, you can't get under that. That's crazy. Here again, I can only minister with what God put into me. I don't have to apologize for that because I certainly have gifts in me that the last speaker did not have. And if I'll just obey God, that gift will flow. It'll not be like the, the previous speaker at all. But it'll also bless the people. And again, of course, I did that. And many people got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. And I was able to pray for the sick and everything as well. All right. So then the bottom line is don't compare. And I think you can see by now, we read the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 12. And to another, and to another, and to another, and to each one, and many members. So don't compare. You're, you, we are uniquely different, each one of us. So just stay with you. And we'll close the session right there. And may God bless you, and we'll continue in the next session. Amen.